Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. It's been a while since I've made a video. I've been really busy building this home and selling the one we're currently in and getting ready. I thought I would be able to do a video from time to time, but it's been a little more time consuming than I thought. I hope to be able to get back into this in the winter. But for right now, I made a quick video on the Nexion display, uh, drawing some lines, circles, and rectangles. I'm going to follow this up with a video on how to draw an arc. There's no native way to draw an arc in the Nexion display, but there is a way to do it um, just doing a little math. I have a very simple setup right now. I have a large display with two pages. and On the first page, I have a button that takes you to page two. And you can see the code page two. And on page two, I have a button that takes you back to page one. And that's all I have so far. On the first page, I'm going to add a button that will just draw a line, just to show you how to do that in case you don't know. And the command for this is just the word line, a space, and then the first two are the x and y coordinates for the initial point. And we've got it set at 100 and 100, so we're going to go from up in this corner, we're going to go over 100 points and down 100 points. And then the next point over here, x2 and y2, are the or where you want to draw the line to. In our case, we're going to start back up at this zero point, and we're going to go over 300 and down 300. It's not 100 plus 300. Each set of points starts up in the upper left-hand corner. Now in this debug screen, if I hit it, you can see it just draws a line. So that's pretty simple, pretty easy to understand. The next one we're going to do is we're going to draw a rectangle. Now I have four commands in here, and I'll explain why in a minute, but the logic is the same. So we're going to go over 100 and down 200, and we're going to make, a, that'll be our upper left hand corner of the rectangle. And then we're going to make the second point, the lower right hand corner of the rectangle, 300, 300, and then I did forget to say, but then you put the color that you want it to be. The line is the word line, but for a rectangle, they have the word draw. I wish it was rectangle or R-E-C-T, but it's just draw. And you get used to it if you play with this a lot. Now the draw command will just draw the outline of a rectangle. The fill command is the exact same command, but it makes it solid. So we're going to draw another rectangle starting 150 over, 50 down. And then we're going to draw that to the 200 over, 100 down. And you'll see it'll be full. Now these next two are just kind of for fun. And what it's going to do is it's going to draw the rectangle. It's not going to fill it in, but it's going to draw it going the other way. So it's going to start over 100, down 250, but it's going to go back 50 and 300. And then the next one is just going to go the same way, but it'll be smaller. It'll make sense when I show it to you. But I want to show you that you shouldn't draw a rectangle backwards. I'll explain in debug. So when I hit this rectangle button, it drew all the rectangles. So here's the solid one, and here's the not solid one, or the outline one. And then I started a rectangle in this corner right here, and drew it backwards. And you can see it left out the top and bottom lines. Over here on this side, I did the same size rectangle, but I started in this corner and went this way, and it drew the lines. There's some issue with Nexion, and I wasn't able to get a response when I asked them. I'm not sure why that is, but just know that you should always draw your rectangle starting in this corner up here and going down to this corner here. Now we're going to add a circle. Okay, for the circle command, you do CIR for circle, and then you put the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. So you go over to the right and then down, and that's your start point. And then the third value is the radius, is how, how far you want it to be. Now the diameter is twice the radius, so you have to kind of keep that in mind that you're only going the radius of the circle, not the diameter. And then instead of using the color red, I just typed in a random number, 6,700 or 67,453, and we'll see what color that ends up being. Now, CIRS 
is the same command. It's going to draw a circle, but it's going to make it solid. The S makes it for a solid circle. I'll show you this in debug. It's hard to see this circle. Hopefully it comes through in the video, but I have one here on the left, and that's a solid circle. And then I have this one on the right, and it's just the outline. Maybe I didn't pick the right color, but it was random, and I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And now you can draw over the other ones. There's our line, and there's our rectangle. If I draw the circle again, you'll see it should go over those. And you can see what it does is it just draws over them. Now, I have this button here to go to page 2. And now I'm on page 2, and that's just a blank page. But you'll notice when I go back to page 1, everything we drew is gone. So whenever you refresh the page, go to a page and comes back, it doesn't retain what you've used in these draw commands. Now, if you had it set up on page initialize or something, then you could, but you can't do it dynamically and then save it and come back to it. Now on page 2 here, I'm over on the second page, we're going to do something just a little bit different. I'm going to add two number fields. I've selected both of them and we're going to set them both to be with a scope of global. We're going to set them so we can change the numbers in the different fields. Then I'm going to add a button. And we're just going to call it line because we're going to use it to draw a line. And in this, in this uh, command here, we're going to have a line, and then the first value is the x over, and then the second value is the y, which is down. And then the third value is the second point, and we're just going to add 100 to each of those values. But we're going to use n0 and n1 for our values, and then we're going to add 100 to n0 and n1. And what I still haven't got down completely is Sometimes Nexion will let you do math in the command, and sometimes it won't. In this case, it will. If it didn't, we'd have to figure out, we'd have to set a variable, we'd have to do the math before the variable, and then put the variable in here. But in this instance, um, we can do the addition of 100 in. So wherever our first point is, wherever we set down here for n0 and n1, when we press this button, we're going to draw a line down and to the right 100 more spots. So we'll go to page 2, and if I just hit line right now, it's going to drop from 0 to 100, or 100 over, 100 down. If I change this to 200, and make this one 153, I've got two different values, and you'll notice when I entered the number, if you know about Nexion when you use this keypad, it refreshes the page so it erased what we drew. But now it's drawing the line over here. And in this way we can draw a line based upon what we put in here. You could have four boxes and you could set all four points. But just for this video I have the two and then we'll just always add a hundred. But what if you wanted to draw multiple lines on a page or multiple circles or multiple rectangles? You could use these same variables and maybe add one for the radius for a circle, but you could pretty much duplicate what we do with a line with a circle and with a rectangle. But if you don't want it to be erased, you can't refresh this page, so we wouldn't be able to use the keypad. So we're going to do something a little bit different. I've added these two sliders, one's numbered H0 and one's numbered H1. And when we release these sliders, or when we move the sliders, we're going to move the value of the slider over to here. So we'll make n0 equal to h0 when we release it, but we also want to do it on the move. And we want to do the same thing with h1, but we want it to be n1 and h1, and we also want to do it on release. But since the point can be anywhere on here, we need to change the values for HO. And HO is the, the horizontal. And, we, and on this one, it's 480 is the total, or no, 800 is the total across. 
So we're going to set so we're going to set the maximum value to 700 because remember we're going to add 100 to it so we don't want it to go past the 800. You could and it would just try, but you wouldn't see it. So we'll just set it to 0 to 700 and we're going to set its value so that the slider starts in the middle to 350. Now the bottom one is 480 tall. So the max value would be 380 and half of that is 190. So now we'll run this. We'll go to page 2. We'll draw a line first just to draw it. But when I click on this, it instantly goes. And now when we draw a line, it'll draw another line. And when I move it, it draws a line. If I move it, it draws a line. And you can see now you can draw lines everywhere, which is kind of fun. And like I said, you could add a second two numbers down here and two more sliders. and or have different ways to populate the sliders. You could have little buttons that you increase and decrease the value and then you could have radio buttons to pick which one you're you're working with at a time or you could even you could even do that with the sliders. You could have one slider and then you pick which button or which value you're adjusting. But I just thought this was kind of a fun fun thing to play with and I had a request to do a video on an arc and I thought well before I do an arc video I should have a video on just general usage of how to draw because I'm going to use the line function to draw an arc in the next video. Well that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.